Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Liquor Shields, Dust Lacers, Peasants, Fassels, Minions. I'm a useful idiot. And uh, today I want to talk about Sudan. But I want to, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the, my beloved Deb Truth, who gave me this wonderful, a uh, useful idiot sweater, which of course has become uh, one of my uniforms here on this channel. So, uh, Merry Christmas and uh, thanks for the sweater, Deb. And uh, anyway, let's talk about Sudan. I was planning to do a video about Sudan anyway, and uh, now uh, seems like a good time because all, all hell's breaking loose. So uh, the uh, events are escalating quickly. So first of all, we had uh, what appears to be an attempted coup in South Sudan, South Sudan being part of Sudan that recently became uh, independent in uh, 2011 from uh, northern Sudan. And Sudan has been in the uh, press for years now because of atrocities and uh, resistance going on in the western part of the country in Darfur. So uh, now we have South Sudan's uh, separate country and uh, ethnic violence is spreading through the uh, country now and hundreds have been killed and there's talk about a civil war and uh, this is escalating quickly. There's already U.S. troops have been dispatched to protect the U.S. Embassy and protect U.S. citizens and, and property and foreign nationals are being evacuated. Kenyan troops are now on the way to protect uh, Kenyan citizens there. And um, we see a, a replay of a number of things we've seen before. First of all, we have the uh, black uh, minority in the south, now in a separate country in South Sudan, in the predominant Arabic uh, Muslim north, uh, now its own country. And um, this has a, a, a long history. And uh, we see the results, uh, as we always do, uh, that we've seen throughout Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, centuries of conflict and um, the uh, results of colonial borders. So we have another conflict where uh, apparently um, this stretches back pretty far in Sudan. In fact, in the seventh century, um, uh, uh, Nubia was infiltrated by Arabic Muslims. And so this struggle between the uh, minority blacks in the south and the uh, Muslim Arabic uh, Arabs in the uh, north is uh, going back hundreds of years now. And, uh, but we're only going to cover the more, more recent history. So anyway, we have another example of uh, uh, colonial borders. In this, in this case, uh, Egypt and the UK uh, essentially set up the borders of what we know as Sudan and included southern Sudan, which is mostly black Christian. So let's get uh, into the, uh, the history now um, because uh, I haven't done one of these for a while. And uh, I'm going to go through a, a nutshell history, very quick history. Uh, first thing to be noted, though, that the United States is are, uh, considering getting involved in a, a conflict that's uh, Africa's longest war. Uh, Fifty plus years off and on, this uh, civil war has been going on in that region. And um, it's also uh, the largest country in Africa. So the largest country in Africa with the longest war. So it, it begs the question, of course, uh, of all the years that this conflict has been going on in Sudan, um, the United States is, is choosing now to enter, and of course the obvious answers to that are southern Sudan is where all the oil is. It's one of the reasons why we were so, the United States was so supportive of creating a separate state in South Sudan. So uh, the uh, southern uh, Sudan history is a struggle for independence, and they've been struggling for independence for a long time. Like I say, they've got it in uh, 2011. And, uh, and um, Let's, uh, let's go through the quick history. So 1956, they got their independence from the Egypt and the UK. 1958, as in so many of these countries, uh, these post-colonial countries, there was a military coup. 1964, the country collapsed. From 1966 to 1969, it had a civilian government, very briefly. 1969, there was another military coup. 1971, there was a, a failed coup. Um, and then in 1972, the South was granted a certain amount of autonomy. And uh, the South Sudan probably would have become independent back in the 70s, but in 1978, oil was discovered there. And uh, that uh, changed the whole landscape. Uh, previous to that, uh, Sudan was just another country that was a Cold War pawn um, between the United States and, and uh, Russia and China. And in fact, uh, at this point, Sudan is one of uh, Iran's few allies. So in 1978, oil was discovered, and uh, needless to say, in 1983, 
major civil war broke out ag again. And it was in 83 that Sharia law was pronounced in, in North Sudan in the consolidation of the Muslim hold on the country and the persecution of everyone else. Then in 1985, there was another military coup. In 1989, there was another military coup. And um, the U.S. has uh, generally supported the struggles of southern Sudan, but this would be the first time that we've got directly involved there. And um, the, the U.S. has long regarded uh, Sudan itself as uh, akin to an uh, Iran-like Iran regime and uh, has state uh, sanctions against it for being a terrorist nation. And um, Sudan has only been uh, in, the, uh, in the eye of the American public a few times over the years. In 1998, of course, President Clinton uh, struck a, uh, uh, fired missiles into what was supposedly a chemical weapons factory, but uh, it turned out to be just uh, making medicine. But uh, the point was made and uh, we, the United States showed Sudan who was boss. So uh, then in 1999, uh, there was oil produ production boom, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, U.S. relations with Sudan uh, started thawing about this time. Um, one of the leading imams uh, uh, ruling over uh, Sudan was deposed, um, but there was still uh, uh, war intensifying in the south with atrocities on both sides. Two million people killed. Uh, over this 50-year period, and um, a massive refugee crisis like we see everywhere, including Syria as well. So then in 2001, the UN lifted its sanctions on Sudan. Um, the U.S. sanctions continued, um, and then in 2002, the war in the South was winding down. Um, but then uh, it, around 2003, that's when the uh, Sudan really became in the public eye, when Western uh, Front was opened by resistance in uh, Sudan, and uh, this was when uh, we hear of all the atrocities in Darfur, and once again pitting uh, black tribes against uh, Arabic uh, Muslims, and uh, so then uh, in 2004 the Sudan army was sent to the west um, to uh, basically uh, con contain the situation enough so that uh, the oil industry could boom, but we see the same thing in uh, Sudan that we see in all these countries, unfortunately, uh, not only is there a military, and not only is there an insurgency, but there's a number of militias operating on both sides, and it's always hard to control these situations when you have all these very heavily armed, rampant militias, and we have all the Western powers to blame for the fact that all of these uh, militias are so well armed. So uh, it was the same year that the African Union peacekeepers were sent in, um, to uh, control the situation in, in uh, Darfur, and then more resistance broke out in east of Sudan. So a lot of people don't realize there's an eastern front of resistance in Sudan or western front of resistance in Sudan, and of course a uh, resistance in uh, southern Sudan resulting in a separate country. And needless to say, the creation of southern Sudan only encourages um, separatist movements in the other parts of Sudan. Um, and then there was another coup plot, and that uh, failed. And then uh, January 2005, uh, that's when uh, South Sudan was set up to have autonomy for six years and then have a referendum on uh, independence and uh, a share of uh, oil wealth. And that's when uh, 2,000 UN peacekeepers were put in. So now here we have 2011, uh, South Sudan, achieved its independence, and it's only been a few years, and now we already see uh, these ethnic violences flare up all over uh, southern Sudan, and uh, unfortunately uh, making this struggle continue, this fledgling new nation. And meanwhile, uh, the struggle continues to go on in Darfur, even though it's not in the public eye or in the media anymore, that uh, still continues, uh, including six million refugees and a uh, massive uh, violence perpetrated by militias as well as uh, landmines that will have a legacy in South Sudan for many years to come. So uh, so anyway, that's a brief history, uh, modern history of Sudan. And uh, so up to date we have uh, what may or may not be an actual event. Um, uh, military aircraft Osprey were fired on by supposedly Sudanese rebels and four military personnel were wounded. This may or may not be true, but it really doesn't matter because this event is being used to set up 
some sort of intervention. And that makes sense that there would be an intervention for a number of reasons. One uh, is that the country of Sudan is the last country on the infamous Wesley Clark list of 1995. Uh, Putting, putting forth 20 years ago that seven regimes would be changed in this region and uh, they are all being changed and uh, um, Sudan is last on the list and it, and it seems like Sudan it would need to be neutralized because of the fact that they are uh, Iran's, one of Iran's few allies, they're still considered a terrorist state and uh, I assure you they will be changed and, um, and then we have a lot of Chinese investment in Sudan so it would be nice uh, for the United States to intervene there and uh, basically take over China's investments there. To give you an idea how uh, the uh, Christian blacks are treated in um, Sudan, by the way, it's interesting to find out that blacks are still referred to using the Arabic word for slave. So they still call blacks slaves in uh, Sudan. So, uh, so anyway, uh, U.S. intervention is, uh, seems inevitable for that reason. So. We're probably going to see this escalate. Um, the event needed to be uh, created has been created, and uh, this will be interesting to watch. Uh, now we have Obama invoking war powers and promising uh, further U.S. intervention in Sudan. So uh, here we go, longest war in Africa, and uh, the United States is going to step into potentially another hornet's nest. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one too.